Hi there. Welcome back to Tuesday's Tips. I'm Greg Kaiser, and in this weekly feature, we've been talking a lot about Lightroom and doing some global edits. And for those that have been with me since I started this several months ago, uh, congratulations. We have made it through all the global edits that I really plan on, on covering in this feature. Uh, we've hit every one of the tabs going down the stack on the right hand side with the exception of the lens blur which I don't plan on covering. That's not something that I'm particularly particularly fond of uh, and I'd rather do it with camera lens choice. But anyway, um, that being said, we've pretty much taken care of all the global stuff which is great news and we're going to start getting into some of the more fine tuning um, aspects of Lightroom and today what we're going to go into is going to be the cloning, healing, and the delete um, feature. And this has really grown a lot since I started um, working in Lightroom um, almost 10 years now. Um, when it first started, it was just very, very rudimentary, um, and they've been adding usability and the ability to fine tune your selections and have added a um, content aware delete tool which was fantastic. It has recently been updated to an AI infused delete tool which there are some really good reasons for using that. Um, I'm still kind of of the mindset that I like the clone, the heal, and just the standard content aware delete um, a little bit better just for general purpose work for some of the really heavy lifting that I would normally would have gone into Photoshop for I can do it just as effectively here in Lightroom using the AI stuff um, so there are some some benefits to it but we're going to get in and talk about how to use these tools here in just a few minutes uh, but before we get started I do want to kind of establish the difference between these tools the clone stamp is probably the most heavy-handed one and it really is a matter of you select an area on your canvas and then you are replacing that directly with another area of the canvas. Uh, this can be to move different elements within a canvas to um, change their position a lot of different things you can do with the clone stamp tool. You have to be really careful with the edges and kind of play with the feather to make it just right. Uh, it can be extremely effective and you can change where the source comes from and we'll, we'll show that. But it is a direct replacement from one area of the canvas to another. The other tool we're going to look at is going to be the healing brush. And this is one that took me a little while to really understand because on its face, it looks like it's doing the same thing as the clone stamp. That's not the case, though. Um, what the healing uh, stamp does is it takes texture from another area on the canvas and replaces that area that you're trying to remove or retouch. And it takes the colors from the area that it was in originally and kind of bleeds those over to the new texture. So it's a really nice way of blending, and this works fantastic with skin, um, taking blemishes out and things like that because it just removes that blemish by replacing it with texture from somewhere else in the picture while keeping the skin tone colors the same around. So it's a very effective tool there. Um, the delete tool, and it looks like an eraser, is pretty much just that. You highlight the area you want to disappear and it will pretty much make it go away and it will kind of source the replacement material from the area around that um, retouch, which is why it's content aware. And then the AI stuff will actually replace it based on what it thinks would go right in that and there's different options. Um, and we'll get into all of that, but the thing to remember is you can always change where the source comes from which is very important with this. And you can get into some very, very intricate retouching, whether it be a person or a landscape or anything that you're photographing, you can really get into the intricacies of rebuilding portions of it if there's something 
that you don't like in the frame. Now, obviously, ideally, you're going to shoot your photos in a way where you don't have things that need to be removed. And you can do this with focal length, camera position, camera angle, all kinds of different things you can do in the field that will save you a lot of time editing. And that's what I always recommend doing. But there are times, there are things that you miss, there are things that are unavoidable that end up in your photographs and you have to deal with them. And it's good to have these tools available and that's what we're going to get into today. So I'm gonna go ahead and move us over into Lightroom and we're going to take a look at a couple of things. And we're gonna start out um, with this picture of the uh, old Buick and I don't know why my shadows are showing up. Okay, there we go, got that taken care of. Um, now this has been edited. I've done a copy of it, a virtual copy within Lightroom, um, just so I don't mess up my master file edit. And I'm leaving all the edits in place and I have unchecked everything that is here in the uh, remove module. And for those that are not familiar, the remove module um, is going to be located underneath the histogram. We've got these icons here, which this right here is just the edit sliders. This is your basic tab that you're going to be under that gives you access to all these that we have covered. We've got the crop overlay, crop tool, which we talked about in another video where you can change the aspect ratio or fine tune where the edges are. Um, we've got this right here, which is the eraser, the remove tool. That's what we're talking about today. And we've got red eye reduction, which I've never used. Um, and it's more or less for if you're doing an edit on a point and shoot that has the flash right next to the lens. And then we've got the masking tools, which we're going to get into soon. But today, um, we're going to go into the remove tool. And when you click that little eraser, you get this dialog box that comes up. And there's three different modes. Um, and in order, we've got the remove tool, it's the eraser, and then we've got this healing tool, which is a band-aid because, well, band-aids are for wounds and you heal wounds, so that's kind of how you can remember that. And then we've got this stamp here, which is the clone stamp. Um, so those are the three basic tools that we're looking at, and then what goes below here kind of will be dictated by what tool you're working with. You can reset the entire panel by hitting reset and it will just undo everything that you've done if you just really start messing it up. Because remember, Lightroom is non-destructive. Everything you do within Lightroom can be backtracked and undone without a problem at any time during the edit. <clears throat> uh, one thing that is new with this most recent update is we have visualized spots within this box. It used to be down here. Um, when you'd open that dialog box, it would show up down here. And essentially, when you do visualize spots, check that, and you can kind of see what's going on in the skies. And if you have a dirty sensor on your camera, um, ideally you want to clean that sensor, but occasionally dust specks will happen. And they're going to possibly show up kind of like this right here, this one little dot. And you can change how sensitive this overlay is. And you can kind of see as I build it up, there's more that is visible. And for me, I like having it almost to the end because I, I like seeing those spots that you may not see. Um, so let's see what this looks like. Um, and it's right here, right over that little crescent of clouds. If I uncheck that. Okay, look, right here is that spot. So it found one that I might have missed otherwise. So when we check the visualized spots, that's what it looks like. So we can go in right from this and we just make this brush a little bit bigger and I'm doing this with the wheel on my mouse but you can also do it with the bracket keys or you can come over here and do the slider and change the size and right now I'm set on the clone stamp so I'm going to left click 
and you see it is now sampling right here moving over right here we're going to uncheck visualize spots you can still see what's going on here and if i hit h on the keyboard it removes that overlay so you can see and since it just needed a direct replacement it worked fine if i hit h again it shows where we were and let's just say that it sampled from here. Now you see what the problem is, because if we take those out, we now have a spot that is worse than the sensor dust that we had before. But that's because it's a direct replacement down here in the bluer part of the sky. So if we don't like that, we can do refresh and it's going to find a new place and let's see if we hit H it's still down in that area so let's try again well, we can just bring it back up if it's not wanting to find a good spot after it's made a mistake although it did a fine job to start with I made it I forced it to make a mistake um, so now that sensor spot is gone so I want to do the space bar where the hand comes up I'm gonna zoom back out uh, that is kind of the, the quick fast of the clone stamp and how to move things around but let's look at it in another practical orientation or another practical application um, as we're looking at this car, we are starting to look for little things that are distractions. There is a, I think it's a bug right here. Yep. So we've zoomed in and all I did was hit the space bar because I'm in this tool here. So if I were to just click on the screen, it's going to do a clone stamp wherever it is. But if I do a space bar, it gives me the magnifying glass, put it over what I want. And here we go. So now we've got this bug here. I imagine I can get rid of it pretty easy with the clone stamp. And you can either make this thing big enough to cover it, which makes it really, really big. Or what I like to do a lot of times is make it slightly smaller and then just left click and you paint around and just keep in mind that feather that you've got built in. And that did a pretty good job. And let's see where it sampled from. If I hit H on the keyboard, it sampled from right here. And if for whatever reason I don't like where that is, I can move this around. I can also move the actual cloned area if I need to fine tune where that is. Say if I didn't take into account the feather, and you can see kind of the bottom shading of the fly here. I can bring this back down ever so slightly. Now, this is kind of the problem that you run into. We have this spot right here that was in the sampled area, which is now right here. So you have to be very careful about patterns when using the clone stamp tool because it will bring in areas just as they are so if you're doing a lot of work in an area you could potentially end up with a repeating pattern that starts to become very visible so be careful with that and if it is including something that has something noticeable here like the spot i will typically try to find something a little bit better without that discernible detail so I can come up and do that that fixes the problem hit H on the keyboard that looks pretty good to me so that is the clone stamp and it samples directly from one area to another so what about the healing brush okay let's go to a different area and see what's going on. Um, I'm gonna hit the space bar, bring the hand up, 
and now I'm going to go to another area that I know is an issue. And for those of you that like to shoot cars, especially cars that have chrome, chances are you're going to run into this situation. You're going to be a cameo in your own pictures. Now I try very hard to avoid this or to get things into a situation where I know I can remove myself. So right here I am, you can see my tripod leg, and I'm huddled down as tight as I can to the camera. You can also see my bag right here, and there was a Mercedes parked right next to the car. <clears throat> so we're going to look at this area right here, and I'm going to close out of here, and then I'm going to open this back up. The reason for that is if I change the tools now, what I have just done with the clone stamp on the bug is going to change to whatever tool. And I don't want to do that, but by closing out and reopening it, it starts a new dialog. So I can go in and choose whichever one of these tools that I want. And I have found in doing this, working in small areas and sections seems to work the best. If I go in here and let's just say I like the clone tool, that's what I'm used to. I want to go ahead and get rid of all of this. Just left click on the mouse and I'm going to go around and do that. Let's see what happens. Okay. This is what happens. Now, why did that happen? If we hit H on the keyboard, we can see where it's sampled from right here on the edge of the lens. So I can move this and I can bring it in kind of close. And honestly, for a reflection in Chrome, that's not terrible. If I hit H, that's passable, and it was easy enough. But let's see what the heel will do with it. I'm going to go ahead and click that, and I'm going to delete that one. So now I'm back. We're going to go with the heel tool. And let's work a little bit smaller. Let's go in here and let's get the bag first. Okay, now you see there's a little bit of a bleed of the color from me going over where the bag was and we pulled texture from over here and replaced there and then it brought the colors in. So it's actually a very seamless fix. But the reason that I got rid of the bag first was because I didn't want to have to worry about bringing a whole lot of area here. So now I've, I've made it a little bit smaller. So I'm still in the heel tool. And I'm just going to kind of paint over me at this point. And let's see what happens. And again, it's going to source and it sourced from that same area that I ended up doing the clone, but it brought the colors and shading in from over here. Now, this works out really well, and there's a little bit of a repeated pattern. So what I would do at this point would be to go over here and just take part of that out. And there, it changed the pattern ever so slightly, and it got rid of that little bit of... Uh, brown there where it pulled the color from me over where the bag was. So if we do the eyeball, that's what we started with. And using just the heel brush, we've ended up with this. Hit the space bar, see the hand, left click on the mouse, we zoom out. Completely imperceptible, can't see it. Now, if we want to deal with this Mercedes, spacebar, zoom back in. Let's see what happens with the heel brush. If I go along here, let's just see what happens. Okay, all kinds of weird things are going on. It's pulling the texture from up here and it's keeping the colors, but you see there's really none of that kind of purplish color in here. This is all correct colors. It's pulling some of the chrome here, the greens. 
all of that is coming from this area. The texture is coming from here, and you can even see where that texture is with the paint chip being here. So let's just see what happens if I drag this over. And this is one of my favorite things to do with the clone stamp and the heel is just moving my source material. And we kind of bring it in, but you see it's, it's really pulling too much of that chrome color, which is neighboring. That's where this gets very limited. And if we want to move back to the clone stamp, See, it actually changes that up. And that's not terrible, and we could probably heal that in a little bit better. But for the sake of this, we're going to try something different. I'm just going to go ahead and click that, and we're going to delete that. Okay. I'm going to close this out because I'm getting ready to change tools up, and I don't want to affect what I've already done. So bring this back up and we're going to go to the remove. Now I'm going to uncheck the generative AI and object aware. This is just the original content aware um, delete tool that was uh, added, I think end of last year, I think it was November or December on the Lightroom update. <clears throat> As it sits, this is a very, very effective tool and I've gotten to where I really enjoy it. So we're gonna left click here and we're going to go around and just highlight this Mercedes and let's see what happens. Okay, no AI, nothing other than content aware. It's not perfect, but doggone, it's believable. And especially when we're looking at it at something that's not 200%. I mean, if we were to zoom out to 100%, see, it's, it's gone. That, nobody would ever know to even look for that. But we could go in, we could do a little healing and cloning and work that out a little bit better if we wanted to do that. Uh, but let's go back and let's do the new AI. This is, this is workable. I'd be happy to work with this and move forward. Um, but let's go ahead and check Generative AI. So it's going to create stuff that it thinks fits there. And I want to do Object Aware because this should be a recognizable object and that's going to help Lightroom mask it correctly. Um, if you don't have a recognizable object, you can leave that unchecked and you can really just make your mask the way you want. And there's a way to go ahead and fine tune it. And I'm gonna show you that here in just a second. So if we just start moving up. And I don't wanna get that seam, but let's see. Okay. It didn't really recognize the fender and it's kind of picked a lot of area around. So we can do either add or subtract. So I'm going to subtract because I want to get this chrome out of the mix. I don't want to affect that at all. And I'm just going to kind of work the, the edges in a little bit closer. And let's see what happens. So I'm, I'm happy with where that mask is. So we're going to hit apply. It's going to send this off to Adobe and they're going to talk with the computers and it's going to find out what needs to happen. And there you go. That is even better. That is more believable than what we did with just the erase tool. I'll be the first to admit. If we don't like that one, we can go to the next option. That's even better. It gives you a straight line with the grass here. We still have the trees. And over here with variations, we can go to the third one. They're all workable. I kind of like that one. So that's kind of where the AI comes in. 
And of course, we can still go over here and do H for hide. And that looks pretty darn good. So I'm happy with that. And if I needed to go in and refine it anymore, there's a refine button here. And I can add or subtract again. Once I actually see what it's going to do, I can go in and make any subtle changes that I need to with that mask. I'm happy with everything here, so I don't need to do that. Um, go ahead and close out here. And let's see. Down here, if we open the tool back up, down here is your eyeball that toggles the effect on and off. So we remove the eyeball, and you see there's me, my bag, and the Mercedes that's parked next to this car. Very short order, that's what we've ended up with. So you can see how this would be very, very beneficial. You can remove all kinds of distractions in your photos. And a lot of times what people want to do is use these tools on people pictures. And I get it. I do the same thing. It makes for a really nice way of retouching. So we're going to bring a portrait that I did of my wife not that long ago into, uh, into the uh, Lightroom here. And we're going to take a look at how this works on a person. So really, really simple. I've already removed all the remove tool effects that I've done. So we're going to uncheck those to start with. And let's go with the clone stamp first and foremost. <clears throat> and I'm going to show you how you can do something kind of creative with this. So let's say her two earrings did not match. They did. She loves her earrings. They're never out of her ears. But let's just say they didn't match and you as the photographer wanted them to match. We can go to the clone stamp tool. Size, feather, and opacity. Um, I like to set the opacity at 100%, especially for clone stamp. Um, feather, for this situation, I want to drop the feather kind of way down. And I'm going to show you why. I like the warmer color tone on this earring better than this earring. So I want to move this earring over here. So what I want to do, I'm going to zoom in, spacebar on the keyboard, hit the plus, and now we can go in here and get that sized just to where it's around that pearl. And that feather may be a little too much because you can see that area between the inner and outer circle. That's your feather. So I'm going to bring that way, way, way down. Something like that. That's looking better because I don't want to get into the actual earring itself. I just want the pearl. And left click and it did a fantastic job of removing it. But that's not what I wanted to do. So we're going to go into 100% instead of 200%. And use the space bar to move around. And you can see where this thing went. Let's see. Left click. And now we can start to drag this sample you see it's a direct replacement so now we've got part of her face going over and hanging from her ear um, she's going to kill me because she does not like her braces although i think this is a really cute picture uh, but now we're going to sample from this other pearl so let's move back over to this side remember the pearl was gone Of course, the lighting is wrong here because there shouldn't be light coming from this side because that's on her face. But you see the point. You see what we're doing here. Uh, 
and you see now we've got perfectly matched pearls on both sides. So you can actually do that. You can move something from one part of the image to another and duplicate it if you wanted to do that. If for whatever reason this pearl over here was completely in the shadow and didn't show up, this is something that we could do. And that's with the clone stamp. Now there is another thing that bothers me on this picture, and this is something I actually did correct on the original, uh, and that's going to be this little line here on her jacket. So we're going to close out here, we're going to reopen because I don't want to affect this over here, and I know I'm going to do a different tool. If I'd just gone straight to the clone stamp, I could have just moved on and done that. So we're going to zoom in here. And since we're working with detail stuff, I always like to zoom in dealing with the clone stamp. It's just easier to work with. Um, so we're going to switch over to the heel tool. And again, size, feather, and opacity. We're going to bring the feather back to somewhere around 75-ish. So we've got a good, nice, gradual feather there. And I'm going to size this using the wheel on my mouse to where that inner circle is about as wide as this area that I want to make go away. I'm going to left click and I'm going to drag over. And this is the heel. So we're taking texture from somewhere else, which is just right over here neighboring. And then we're bringing the color tones here. And that works pretty well. But it's looking a little bit muddy just because it's blending that texture and the color and stuff. So if we want to dial that back a little bit, we can bring the opacity down. And somewhere, eh, somewhere right around in there looks pretty good. Uh, I don't generally do a whole lot with the opacity. It is something that is handy, especially if you're trying to blend something in. Um, so I'm happy with that. And while we're looking at clothing, I'll just hit the space bar and I'll start moving around with the space bar held down to kind of let me see what's going on with the clothing. So if there's any dust, hair, lint, anything like that, I can see it. There's a little spot right there. So let's go make this, this is a smaller brush just around that one little highlight. Left click and it goes away, but we're going to dial the opacity back up to 100% because there wasn't a whole lot of need to blend that texture. So we've now used the clone stamp and the healing brush all in this same photo. And we're at 100%. And this is something that I just did for fun just to try this out before I got started. And I was actually very impressed with the results. Um, we're going to go ahead and close this out. We're going to open it again. And because she's not real fond of her braces, we're, we're going to go ahead and do what the orthodontist is not willing to do just yet. And we're just going to remove them. So how's the best way to do that? Let's try just the remove tool, that content aware remove tool. And we're just going to go get something that is sized not too big because we want to be able to make sure that we get this in detail, but we don't want to spend a long time highlighting. So I'm going to go through here and just kind of paint over what I want removed. Go down through the wire. And we are just still doing this. This is going to be kind of a rough mask just because, well, I'm trying to do this somewhat quick so the video doesn't run forever. And we'll go up here and get these back here. Now, let's see what it does. <clears throat> no AI or anything. And you see it removed the braces, but it's not convincing. So, obviously, clone and heal is not going to work here. Let's see what happens if we do generative AI, 
and object aware because it should recognize braces. It's generating and it's going to Adobe server. It's going to come back and let's see what happens. Well, I might have just gotten an orthodonture degree. Um, let's see, we've got variations and, and these may be funny because um, there was one that was really funny when I tried it originally. But let's go through variation number two. That one is really good. I would need to clean this up back here. Um, let's see if number three is one of those funny ones. No, um, when I did it originally, it, it gave her like snaggle tooth. It was really, really bad. Um, but two and three are not bad at all. Now, obviously, these are not her teeth at this point. It's created based on everything that's around. But let's see. We'll just go up here and we will do this right here. We'll just do the little left click and drag. We're still on the uh, content aware and we're going to apply. I'm fine with that mask. And let's just see what it does. Okay, it just pretty much removed it. I could have done that with the just basic eraser tool, could have done it with the heel probably. Um, but that's pretty convincing. And let's see, let's go ahead and close out here and zoom out. Now there's a little bit of coloration stuff, but that would be something else we could do retouching. That would be a very simple thing, local edit with a 30% brush, brighten it, desaturate it, and that would blend in nicely. But if we go back here and we do the eyeball down at the bottom, this is actually pretty convincing. And that's, that's asking a lot, I think, um, from retouching. This, this is something I would not do in a portrait just because it's not the person that I captured at the time. Um, the braces, I think, make this picture. But if the subject is adamant they want the braces gone, it is something that you can do, uh, which I think is pretty amazing. Um, and I'll, I'll be the first to admit that the generative AI in Lightroom is something that is helping me a lot and is keeping me from having to go into Photoshop because most of the time if I'm doing some heavy lifting as far as image manipulation like this I would go into Photoshop to do it. It's quicker, it's more, effect, more effective but with this most recent Lightroom update I can do just about 95 percent of what I would typically do in Photoshop in Lightroom now which I like. I like the one-stop shopping. I work in Lightroom. I keep everything in Lightroom. So it makes sense to me to be able to do this type of stuff in Lightroom. And this most recent update is very, very efficient. Um, and I think it's very beneficial. So just to um, refresh, we've got the three different modes up here. We've got the remove tool, which if you uncheck these two, is going to work just like it would normally. Um, then if we want to do generative AI, we can do that. We can do object aware, and we can do that even independently. Like if we're removing, you know, a car from a landscape or something, we can do object aware, and it would automatically mask the car. The generative AI would then decide what it's going to fill in based on the surrounding areas. So those two are generally going to be used together. Um, we've got the heel brush. Um, oh, and of course with the delete, we've also got the ability to change the opacity. Again, I generally will have it set at 100. Um, with the heel tool, we've got um, size, feather, opacity. And this is one of those where I would play with the opacity with the heel tool. And we're going to go ahead, this little spot on her nose, um, which that's part of her. I'm not going to remove that in actual portrait. Um, 
if it's something that's going to be there after two weeks, it's going to remain. That's just my way of doing things. Um, but we come up here and we just kind of highlight that spot. We're on the heel tool. It does a great job. We can reduce that opacity. And you see how it just kind of lightens it. And this is a really good way of taking shine out. Um, so while we're still in the heel tool, I don't need to close it and reopen it because I'm staying with the heel tool. Let's do this shine here. And we can change that opacity. And you see how we can make that a whole lot more believable. And this was not much shine, but if you do have that hot spot, you can do this. It's a really easy um, fix. It's no problem at all. Um, so we can do that um, with the heel. And the big part is the opacity here. Um, close this and open it back up because otherwise it's going to go ahead and do clone stamp tool. But clone stamp tool does the same thing as heel. It gives you size, feather, and opacity. Works in the same way. Um, generally speaking, with clone stamp, I like the opacity to be kind of high. The feather usually is going to be a lot smaller because we're doing a direct replacement. Uh, and it's just whatever tool works best for what you're using. So keep that in mind um, as you're doing your edits. And let's see, we're going to go ahead and head back over here. Uh, keep these things in mind when you're doing your edits that if there are little small distractions or even larger distractions, you can remove a lot of them in Lightroom or Photoshop or Capture One or, or whatever image editing software you choose to use. Uh, I really like that Adobe has brought in a lot of these um, retouching tools into Lightroom. It helps my workflow tremendously and I think it will for you as well. So that brings us to the end of this week's tips and tricks and I, well, Tuesday's tips and I hope that you've enjoyed it. It's been beneficial. Let me know if there's anything you would like me to cover specifically. I always like to do topics that are of interest to my viewers. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps the channel out. I probably will never ever get monetized. Um, but it's nice to see that I am helping folks out um, just by seeing those likes and the subscriptions coming in. So keep that up. If you are interested in doing some mentorships with me, um, I can do editing mentorships very easily remotely online, virtually. So no matter where you're at, uh, we can make that happen. Uh, if you happen to be local to the foothills of North Carolina, we can do mentorship in person um, as well as virtually. So just keep those things in mind, and I greatly appreciate you joining me for this week's Tuesday's Tips, and I look forward to seeing you next week. So in the meantime, happy shooting and happy editing. See you later.